Right, I'm live. Bear with me a second. I can't wake up what's going on. Oh my god. Okay, right. Let's try this. Stuck on this one. Right, I'm gonna be back in about a minute. I'm gonna sort this out. <laughs> Okay, right. We are live. Thank you for joining me. Um, let me sort everything out one minute. This is completely brand new for me. And you know you always get that um, those first couple of seconds from a live feed where they have no idea whether they've gone live or not. Well, that's going to be happening quite a lot with this. I just noticed I'm all over the place. Um, so, I prepared a little intro. So that was to mask the first couple of seconds where everything's really awkward and everyone's usually like this. Trying to guess whether they are kind of live or not. And I un completely understand why now. I'm looking at about five different things to tell me exactly what's going on. Um, so, just to let you know... All right, there's a the chat. I got loads of chat things. Cool. So, to let you know what, what's, what the plan is for this video, I've got a live... Um, practice session planned what you are going to notice though is i spend a lot of time talking about irrelevant stuff repeating my words tripping over my tongue accidentally strumming the guitar when i'm talking and when i record videos i've got the ability to edit all of that stuff out <laughs> for this i don't so if i just keep talking just tell me to shut up i'm going to try and uh, answer as many questions as i can as we go um, those of you that want to play along, make sure that you're in tune and ready to go. We'll be starting off with the spider exercise. Um, and I'll be going through it in a few different ability levels. I'll start off with a basic, basic level. Uh, hello to everyone in the chat as well. Oh, I'm just noticed what's going on. I'll uh, just have a quick read. Let me know where you're from as well. Uh, and when you're from. Whether this is like in the morning or... In, in the night, I know a lot of people are missing this because they are kind of asleep. Uh, and I'm, I'm blown away by the amount of people who are involved with this from all over the world. If you notice, I'm sweating quite a lot. I'm really nervous about this. It's, uh, it's probably the most nerve-wracking I've been for a while. So hello to everyone. Hi, hi, hi. Everyone's saying hi. Um, so let me know what... I can see a lot of people saying... Uh, how to use a tune uh, D chord. Hello, Edinburgh, Michigan. <laughs> Yorkshire, New York. Yes, yeah, to the morning in the USA. Yeah, okay. I hope you're okay with my accent as well. That's one of the most difficult things I, I come to terms with with um with YouTube. I find it hard <laughs> to listen to my own accent sometimes. And the way that I normally speak is a lot faster than this. If I talk to other Welsh people, it uh it'd be inaudible. So uh, I hope you're all okay. Hello, Wales. Yeah, I know what time it is in Wales. Thanks, Evelyn. <laughs> Hello, Mexico. Oh, this is amazing. Cool. Germany. I'm glad you're enjoying the course. Okay, so those of you that want to play along, get your guitars ready. Um, hopefully, this is going to work. Let me find all this kind of stuff. Shoot that over there. That is going to actually make sense in a second. So, there. Cool. Is it working? Yes, it is. So, um, <laughs> this is the metronome. I've worked out how to get it on the screen, hopefully. Uh, like I said, this is the first time I've done this, so bear with me if I mess things up. But we'll just go through a practice plan, starting with the spider exercise. Those of you that want to join in, I'm going to take this down to, I don't know, like really slow, 90 beats per minute. Hopefully you can hear it. Let me know if you can. I'm going to quickly go back to this other one. Everyone okay here in that? Let me know. Hi Swansea, hi Denmark. Yeah, I've changed the speed. Okay, so we're gonna go for, uh, let me go back to this, one minute. <laughs> yeah, one of me is enough on screen, we don't need two. 
<coughs> okay, so hopefully you can hear my guitar and everything. Let me know. Um, while I'm not doing this part, um, I'm going to find it difficult to actually read the comments as well. So I'll catch up with everything. But um, we're going to start off with the spider exercise. Hopefully everyone is up to lesson five. Uh, while I'm talking, I'm turning it off. Hopefully uh, everyone's up to level five at this point. We are almost midway through the course. Um, so I'm expecting, well, a lot of you to, to know the spider exercise or understand the spider exercise. But I completely understand that people are going to be at different levels entirely. A few people have got in touch with me to say they, they find it difficult with D. One of the comments I just saw, some people find it hard to do D, which is completely understandable. Um, I'll address that in a second when we get to that. We're going to warm up and everything first. Um, just to let you know what else I got planned for this video as well. I'll be reacting to comments as we go, as I kind of see them. I might miss a few, so I'm sorry if I do. And I've got a few questions that I've got, uh, that I've been asked this week that I'll be answering as well. Some important stuff about posture and a few other things. And I've got a few strumming exercises to do, a few kind of um, back of four kind of stuff. Only the, only with, was it with before or with back? I don't know. It's just me anyway, talking to you and expect you to copy me if you can there's a couple of games that i want to kind of do um and also i'm going to give you a new song but i'm not going to tell you what the song is uh partly because i don't want this video to get like written off as copyright infringement <laughs> but i also want to give you a challenge for this as well I've, I'm, i want to structure it as if it's one of the lessons basically just as an extra thing um only with me ranting a lot more and talking about irrelevant things a lot more um okay so back to the exercise here we go we're going to start off doing one note every other click. So it's going to be like that. Okay. For this one, I'm only going to ascend. I'm only going to go up. And when we get to the last note, which will be here, we're going to stop and I'm going to change it a little bit. That's the point where we're going to make it a bit more difficult. Okay. So hopefully you can all keep up with this and you've had kind of five weeks of practicing this, this exercise. So after four, one, two, three, four. And I do realize this might be a bit too fast for some people. If it is, you can always come back to this video again. It's just to give you an idea of what you need to think about. You know, when you reach this level, almost next. Brilliant. Well done, everyone who's kept up. I'm going to change the speed and we're going to go to. Um, let's go to uh, 120 beats per minute. Same thing. Now, I know I've jumped up a little bit, but we'll just try it again. This is the equivalent of 60 beats per minute. But it's easier when there's more clicks to follow. Okay? One, two, three, four. You can do all down strokes if you want to. I know I spoke about alternate picking before. You do whatever's natural for you. Cool. Let me just check the comments to make sure I haven't kind of missed anything. Yeah. Shred harmonic minor <laughs> Malmsteen style. Okay, today maybe maybe at the end. Hi Richard. Stay with heaven. Okay, yeah, I'll uh I'll try and rip through some of those towards the end. Let me have a quick check. Um anyone playing along? Yeah, 50 people watching. I don't even know. Oh, yeah, 50 people watching. To be honest, I expected no one to be watching this. And I half expected this to be just a, I don't know, just like a one-way thing. So it's nice to be having some comments, actually. <laughs> so thank you, everyone, who's been there. Lots of buzzing. Is there loads of buzzing? Yeah, it might be a... All right, okay. Is there loads and loads of buzzing? Is it inaudible or is it okay? Uh, okay, well, I'll keep going and hopefully 
we can manage if you can't hear it properly if there's too much buzz in if it's like background buzz i'll try and fix it if i can but um otherwise we'll just keep going let me know if it's too much okay if it's too too much buzz in okay no buzz in all right okay here we go let's uh let's take it up a notch i'm gonna go back down to 80 beats per minute and we're gonna try this one now this time we're gonna do one note per click one two three four Well done, everyone who's keeping up. Now we're going to take it up to 100 beats per minute. I know I'm skipping on quite a bit, but I want to show you like the process. I want to. I know there's a lot of people who have found that way too easy, and some people have found that right really difficult. So I'm trying to appeal to everyone at the moment. This time we're going to go all the way up and all the way back down, ascending and descending. Okay. After four, one, two, three, four. Okay, now one quick mention at this point if you find this difficult to um to play at all you need to kind of analyze why you find it difficult is it your left hand is it, well is it your fretting hand that finds it difficult is it your picking hand that finds it difficult and then you can kind of isolate those things so let me show you my hand a second hopefully you can see that um now if i found the picking difficult then I need to spend more time picking. So you can hold your finger on each one, spend more time on each note, and maybe go one, two, three, four, one, two. If you want to practice alternate picking, a bit heavy then. Then you can do that. And that's to, uh, someone asked me a, a little while ago, like, how to. I don't know how to address that kind of thing. If you need to isolate anything in particular, then you can. Just think about why you find it difficult. If you find your little finger is kind of a bit too weak, then you just hammer on that little finger as much as you can, on and off. Just even just your little finger on its own. For as long as you can, hold it down as hard as you can for as long as you can, and it'll strengthen your little finger. If you imagine, the amount of time that you spend on each fret isn't that much. So you need to be playing that for a, a long time period of time for it to actually do anything if you're only playing you need to think about what your muscles are actually doing for it to work think of it like going to the gym it's not musical it's not um it's not nice to listen to it's what's called a chromatic scale which means you go through every single possible note which doesn't have any musical you know um well it doesn't have much musical purpose uh less than jazz basically so the next thing we're going to do <clears throat> i'll take it up 220 i'm going to try this and this is as fast as we're going to go for now let me bring my metron thing back over so same again all the way up and all the way back down and i forgot to mention as well when i get to the last note i'll play that one again and go back down a few people found it difficult to play the way that i normally do it so when we get to the top We'll do that note again and come back down, okay? I hope that makes sense. I am kind of glossed over it too fast. If I have, let me know. Ready? One, two, three, four. Okay, now another thing I want to say, let me check the comments and things. Okay. Three octave scales, yeah, we haven't got to those yet. <laughs> 
Will playing a three quarter size guitar affect my learning in any way rather than a full size guitar? Sorry, you got two of my faces on screen at the moment. Uh, no, it won't. It's exactly the same instrument. If you've got a three quarter size guitar, it just means the scale is a little bit lower, um, which means you can reach a bit better. I'm not sure kind of how old you are or if you can, if you find it difficult to reach a full size guitar. It's the same thing. It doesn't it doesn't change anything about it. Um, it depends what kind of music you want to play. Um, if you want to play more like higher up stuff, you know, like then obviously if your guitar ends at fret number 12, if it's an acoustic guitar and it's a short scale guitar, it's going to find, it's going to be quite difficult to play up there. Apart from that, actual learning the, the, for this course, it doesn't matter what kind of, what kind of guitar you've got basically. Um, yes, the video will be online afterwards, I think. I don't know how these live videos work, so hopefully it'll, it'll stay on. Um, still struggling with picking when done faster. Spend a bit more time um, working on alternate picking if you want to. For those of you who are using, um, let me bring that thing off, it looks stupid. <laughs> uh, for those of you who are using fingers and thumbs, uh, no plectrum, sorry, I should say then you can't really go up. There's no quick way of playing faster when you just use your thumb, because you are restricted a little bit to just going down. The only way that you can go up when you don't use a plectrum is to use a finger as well, and that's kind of overcomplicating it a little bit. Um, yeah, but if you did want to, I, I, I will say. So you go down with your thumb and up with your finger. Obviously, that's a, it's just a, an extra process. It's an extra process for your brain to do, which is, um, for me, it's, I don't play like that all that often. Uh, the finger picking stuff I usually do spans across more strings. But if it's picking with a plectrum that you find difficult, um, then make sure that you got a reference point. I've spoke about it before, but I use the heel of my hand to go on the bridge of the guitar, which is there. And that keeps my hand in the right place. Doesn't matter where the guitar moves, but doesn't matter what happens with the guitar itself. Um, I know which string that I'm on because I can feel it under my hand, under my fingers. Classical guitar, that exercise is just for your left hand. With classical guitar, um, we are not looking at too much like classical technique with this. With classical, posture is very important. With a classical guitar, if I just uh, mention quickly, this part of the guitar um, here, is meant for your leg usually to sit on like that. I can't, I don't know whether you can see me, but that part of the guitar, every guitar has this little thing there, unless it's a flying V guitar or one of those like weird shaped ones, which is almost impossible to play sitting down, not comfortable. <coughs> that sits on your leg, which means the guitar, like depending on the weight and the, and the make of the guitar, sometimes it'll be kind of balanced so the neck will fall down a little bit like this. Um, and I've got to counterbalance it with this arm to keep it upright. Now the angle of the neck does make it a little bit awkward to reach fret number four. So for classical guitar, the, re the way that they've kind of combated that is you raise up your other leg, you put that groove on that leg. Now the angle of the neck is more suited to a natural position of your arm. Your arm wants to come up like that. Your arm doesn't want to come up like you know to suit this that can be it can add a lot of tension um it does add a little bit of tension but you, you get conditioned for it but when it's like this and classical players play like this everything is kind of it's like it's like the way you, when you dance with someone that's like that should be like a comfortable thing where you've got like round the back and around there that's kind of that's the way i feel of it it's like a hug <laughs> it's like you're hugging the guitar and everything is the strings are in the perfect position for you to pick and you're in the perfect position to fret stuff. And so on, but obviously this isn't built for that, so it's, it's horrible to play. <laughs> um, classical stuff on an electric guitar is just not meant for it. Um, nails, if you want to play classical guitar, nails are really important as well. But I don't want to get too much into that because it's kind of overcomplicating it a little bit. 
if anyone wants to know more about specific stuff for them if you, if classical is your thing let me know and maybe i'll do like a video on just classical stuff because that's a completely different school if i was a classical teacher i'd make you sit with your back straight um everything in the right position before you even played one note you'd have to know how to read it on the um on standard music notation on, on the staff on the stave so um oh, see i mess up all the words constantly <laughs> um right so let's get back to our exercise let me check for this again yeah practice tips for beginners yeah um little and often make sure that you enjoy the practice um play stuff that you like listening to have a goal in mind so if you um if you were just playing for the sake of playing and you don't have any idea where you're headed it's easy to stop it's it's, it's easy just to kind of oh yeah, i haven't got time for that today and then when you come back to it after a couple of days it's like starting all over again because you you need to do it every day to condition your body to think that it needs to do it again tomorrow that's when it gets better at stuff that's when your brain gets better at telling your body to do something if it does it over and over again that's conditioning if you have kind of two or three days off from practice completely it feels like you've gone back a step and it's, it's always it's always a bit of an uphill battle then you still may not even feel like you're, you're getting you're making progress even if you practice every day but i can guarantee you that you are if you practice um throughout the day as well that's a little tip the reason why people struggle with practice is time more than anything um i struggle with practice i don't practice enough at all uh so like all my kind of chops that i gained years ago went out the window when i spend all day working <laughs> and teaching and you know when you throw kids involved and family and everything it uh i'm at the point where i'm comfortable i can teach people you know what i need them to play but i've got to work on more difficult stuff that i found easy a long time ago like this the more technical stuff um like those songs that people always say are the, the hardest ones in the world or whatever i can still remember them but it's just so sloppy my fingers don't they're not conditioned to go down as fast as i want them to so i need to work on it as well and it's finding time that's hard but you can break it up you don't have to do um an hour every day you, like ideally 20 minutes a day would be kind of the least amount of time to to practice but you can break that up throughout the day the way that i used to do it is i'd play my guitar like when i woke up because i wouldn't do anything with my hands the tv would be on i just have my guitar there just playing around noodling around doing whatever i wanted to do um if your guitar is easily accessible that helps quite a lot as well if your guitar's packed away in this case it's under your bed and every time you play it it's a chore that can go against you as well so make sure that you've got a guitar stand you can keep it on wherever you spend most of your time you just grab it and pick it up when you're bored and just play um you don't notice that you're playing as long as you are then the trick is to find something that you can practice that you enjoy and you you, you kind of you enjoy the the road that you're on rather than just thinking of that destination all the time that's that's the the one important thing that i try to get people to do that's the whole point of doing um a lot of songs at this point i know the the course so far has been mainly getting you to the point where you can read a full page of songs so i can just put it up on my website or put it up anywhere you can look at them and say oh right i can do that song now hopefully there'll be one that you want to play that you enjoy the sound of and then that will make you practice enough to get that better those chords will get easier because you know how it should sound you enjoy how they sound and you're kind of connecting everything together then you move on to the next song and then that's got a little bit more difficult chords but you want to do it so you practice it <laughs> uh, and that's the whole point if you don't do any songs in the beginning and it's all okay we got to learn this scale now we got to learn what this note means we got to um, do this exercise for four weeks and you're never playing a song then i don't know it's it's not as fun it needs to be fun that's the important thing um let me have a quick check <clears throat> okay yeah classical guitar I, I go with i'll save the classical stuff for a different one but i will do classical stuff yeah there we are cool um song books it's completely up to you it depends what kind of song book i mean what what i find about <clears throat> 
um, like beginners guitar books. Everyone's got their own way to teach. My way isn't the best way to teach for a lot of people. You got to find the right person who teaches your way that suits you. Um, like I said, the way that I structure the lessons is to get you to play songs early, so that you're practicing and enjoying that practice. A lot of um, books that you can get will say, okay, you need to learn all the names of the strings first. Then you've got to learn how to play Bar Bar Black Sheep. I, I have included all stuff like that in in the lessons that I've done. Um, just for something interesting to do, but that's not the only way to do it. So I've tried to get you to the point where you're playing chords early um, and giving you a reason to learn those chords. Um, I haven't found the perfect book yet. No one's ever brought it to my attention. No one's ever said, oh, I've learned with this book and they've played something straight off and they understand everything inside out. Um, what I suggest is if you wanted to, to get some books to work through, um, there are certain ones for classical guitar which are good for learning music theory. There are certain ones for children which are quite good, and there are th the really technical ones are good as well. But it depends. Like for beginners, it's hard to find something that's that's right. What I suggest: book a guitar lesson for someone near you, and get someone else's advice on what you're doing after this. You know, when, once you're able to book, um, to go and see someone like physically your your nearest guitar teacher. And ask them for their opinion. You know, how are you doing? How are you changing through chords? It's really important to get someone uh, to see you. You know, play in to know whether you're doing something wrong or whether you're. Um, I don't know. You're doing something right as well. Just reinforce that you're doing it right. I know like, these videos that I'm doing for the for the course. It's it's a very broad um, approach. So I'm trying to give you a lot of different. Uh, ways to play things to make it more difficult like like we're doing here the we'll come back to the questions in a second but the last thing I'm gonna do for this warm-up thing I know we've been on it for quite a while is I'm gonna play well I'll give you an, an idea of how to make it more difficult once you've got to the top of that and you get to the last note instead of going back down Go up one fret, so your little finger will go on fret number five, and then you're going to go down using the same fingers as that pattern. Then when you get to there, you go up another fret, you do the same pattern again. I won't do this with a metronome. But you want to keep going. If picking is something you want to focus on. You do it three times for each note, two or four. And if you can go from the beginning, from fret number one, right up so that your little finger is on fret number 12, and then all the way back down, that is a good warm up um, for me and for anyone. If you can play all the way up and all the way back down using that thing up, then up one fret, down, up one fret, up, up one fret, down, up one fret. Um, that's a good amount of time to be spending on this. That's uh, eventually, that's like at the end of this course, that's you know for a little while down the road, just to give you an idea of, of how you can make this a little bit more uh, you know, beneficial for you when you're practicing. So let me have a quick read. <clears throat> so people enjoying Candy? Yeah, great. There's a few songs with the same chords as Candy, which I'm gonna be showing you in, in the next uh, couple of lessons <laughs> um, whenever I shift a higher note is it supposed to make a slight noise so yeah if you when you move to a higher note and you keep your finger on the fretboard you do get that slide the string is vibrating and if the string doesn't stop vibrating it'll keep vibrating and um, because you're sliding your finger up it doesn't stop the string from vibrating. Only when you take your finger off the string does it stop. Um, what else have we got? Enjoys learning the chords. Yeah, chords are interesting. Chords are the basis of everything. Even if you think that it's not. Even if you play, um, well, any kind of song really. <laughs> with, with any kind of theme in mind, so.
is still based on chords. Um, yeah, so chords are at the beginning of all of it. And if you can identify the sound of chords, that's that's how to work out your own songs eventually. What I'd love to do is get people to the point with this course where you're, you've got the tools to, to go off on your own journey. I didn't start this course to kind of rope people in to buy stuff from me. It's literally just to help um, just do something with this time, basically. And hopefully, when you get to the end of this course, you will know how to read tablature, you will know how to read chord progression, you know how to read... Um, there's a few other ways you can read chords, which I haven't told you yet. Um, different time signatures. So all this kind of stuff that people say in passing, when you watch other guitar teachers online, they just, they'll just say things without, you know, without really knowing who they're talking to. And they'll assume that you know what each string is, what, what string the high string is, which one the low string is. Um, where the bridge is, what the nut is on the guitar, what a machine head is, you know, why a string could be out of tune. Um, there's a lot of things like that. That's the whole point of this course, just give you some of the basic stuff. Tips for switching from G to E minor without causing the string to make a noise when I lift off the G. Um, do it slow. Do it really slow. If you want to change from G to E minor without making any noise the reason why the string is going to make a noise when you move from g to e minor is because you're doing like a slight pull off and the string that you're taking off is plucking the string on the way off so make sure that your nails are short and you're coming directly off the guitar um i wish this was a little bit more <laughs> uh i don't know better I'm trying to think of an interesting word, but there's no interesting, more interesting word. <laughs> and I have more than one camera. I've only got this one camera, which is built into my monitor at the moment. I wish I could have something you could come in tight down. I could show you with it closer. If this works out well and people are actually getting something from it and it's something that people think that you can get more from, I will do it again. And hopefully I'll have a bit more, you know, stuff for that, you know. Um, so, yeah. So when you go from G to E minor... Make sure your fingers are coming off the string slowly and then move in. But it doesn't matter if you're, if the strings vibrate when you take your fingers off. Um, make sure your first finger stays on the string because your first finger doesn't have to move from G to E minor. That's something we addressed early on, I think. And when you're strumming... Um, it doesn't matter if, if the strings vibrate there because you want them to vibrate. So... So yeah, I mean, I wouldn't panic about that too much. The more you play, the more control you get over your fingers, the less they spread out when you fret something down. And the tiny, tiny little changes that I do to, to stop things happening that I don't want to happen, like, like C, when I play a C chord, my third finger is actually dampening the E string and I get that noise. You don't notice it because of like every other string ringing. Did I shave? Yes, I did. Well, I trimmed my beard a little bit. Is doing my head in. <laughs> I wasn't actually planning to grow my beard for the whole duration of the twelve weeks, but um, but yeah, I don't do well with a beard to be honest. Um, upstrokes sound really blunt. If they knew, if you're not used to to playing upstrokes, when you say blunt, it could be like harsh. Um, it could be because the plectrum is still angled, like it wants to go down. When you angle a plectrum to go, when you when you strum down mostly, like predominantly going down, the plectrum needs to angle at a point where it just glides over the strings, and you would have conditioned yourself to do that. Um, if you just go up without any flexibility in the way that you play, I don't know whether the mic is in the way, without any flexibility in the way that you play, then your pick is gonna either get stuck and try to flip out of your fingers, or it's gonna sound like blunt or harsh. It's going to sound a bit too heavy. Um, what else have we got? <laughs> Hang on a second. Let me go back. Have I missed anything in, like important? Um, yeah, keep your fingers more loose. Good. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So playing with the metronome, I go too fast. Too slow and can't sing at the same time. It will just come with practice. Um, there's no real tips that I got for that. What happens is in the beginning, uh, you can't hear what you're doing. The whole point of the guess the tunes in the beginning, a few of those, 
when you're playing something and your brain has to interpret everything that it has to interpret to get it to sound the way it does, you can't hear what it is, actually. <laughs> your brain can't actually uh, recognize what the song is. So when you're playing a, when you're sight reading something and you can guess what the tune is, that means that it's becoming a little bit more comfortable. You're you're adapting to it and you're um, you're getting starting to get conditioned to all the things that your brain has to do to interpret music in general. Because your brain does change. The function of your brain will change when you when you play music and a lot of it involves listening. When you first do it, you won't have that um, perception of what's going on, what, what your ears telling you to do. So, <laughs> thanks, thanks Daniel Percy. So, <laughs> one thing you can try to do is take the guitar away completely and play the metronome. I know what that buzz is, someone who mentioned buzzing, I've got a, I might have an issue with the earth. So when I take my fingers off the guitar, I get that buzzy sound, so that's what it was, I've been thinking about it, so hopefully it's gone. But if you find it difficult to stay in time with the plectrum, simplify the movement, Make it so that you're uh, you're doing something that you you know you can do easily, like clapping. So put a metronome on, clap along with a metronome in time. If you can do that, then you know there's nothing wrong with your ears. There's nothing wrong with you perceiving timing. Um, then you want to make that movement more about one hand. So then you just tap one knee in time. Then if you look at the way that I'm tapping my knee. It's exactly the same movement as strumming. So then you dampen the strings and you strum with just the clicky noises in time. And it's the same. It's the same movement that you're doing. There's no difference at all to tap in your knee. It just involves holding the plectrum. Then to build from there, you add in chords and stuff. And if it's single notes that you want to play, like the spider exercise, you make that movement smaller. You strum through some of the strings. And you make that smaller again, so you just pluck in one string. And you find a reference point for your hand, like I mentioned before. Make the movement as small as you can. And that's a way to get, um, I don't know, from, from really struggling to play all that, to breaking it all down into the most basic form that you can, and building it back up and try get it back to, you know, what we want to do. If you think about what you're doing when you play with a metronome, your ear is telling you to, your ear can, is listening to when you need to play. Your brain needs to anticipate when that is going to happen, which means you need some sort of rhythm, which is why you'll see me bobbing my head quite a lot. and Because I'm dancing more than anything. I can't dance, by the way. <laughs> if you see me dancing, oh yeah, I'm not going to even talk about that. But that's what keeps me in time. That's how I anticipate the next beat. Um, but... Your fingers are doing something, your hands are doing something, they've got to coordinate together, and it's a lot to do in one go. So start by clapping and build up, as I just said, to make it a bit more digestible as you go. Um, strumming up, if you don't have a pick, use your finger. I find it really clunky if I'm going down and up with my thumb, because my thumb is quite heavy, and going up, I don't know, it hurts that little bit of my thumb, which is like just where the nail is, I know you can't see. <laughs> So I use my finger, my index finger, just to go down and up. And the same applies for your finger as it does with the plectrum. If you're conditioning your fingers to go down, it'll be angled at a certain way to make that easier to go down. If there's no um, flexibility in your finger, that's gonna hurt when you go back up. So make your finger like as loose as possible, all wibbly wobbly, and just brush the strings. That's, that's what I do. A lot of the time when you see me play in the, um, in the videos, in the lessons, I won't have a plectrum because my plectrum would be over here in the corner somewhere and loads of papers. And I'd be over there in the corner in the, on the acoustic sofa. <laughs> and I just, yeah, it's just easier for me just to play. It'll look like um, I'm not, you know, it'll, it'll look a bit weird. When I strum, it looks a bit... It's hard to see what I'm doing, but all I'm doing is use my one finger, my index finger, to go up and down. The less tension, the easier it'll be. So really, really relaxed, and you should be okay. Um, what else have we got? 
Yeah, we're not on Tinder. <laughs> Easy way from G to D. Going from G to D is very common. It's it's uh everywhere. Nearly well, nearly every song that I wrote down that I got planned for this course has G to D in there somewhere. So the easiest thing to do, if there's there is no reference point with this, there's no kind of anchor point, I should say. So every finger has to come off and move to a different spot from G to D. But look at which finger is moving the least. Your third finger is going from the high E string on fret number three, and it's moving to the string right next to it. That's the first thing you want to think about. You don't ever want to take all your fingers off and start again, because, they, well, you can. <laughs> you can, of course you can. But it'll take a little bit longer than if you think of a logical way to do it. If you think of the, um, I don't know, the quickest route. So my third finger will go to the B string, the one next to it on fret number three. Then you pick, well, I would go my second finger, then we go on the thinnest string, because that's the easiest one to find. It's right on the edge of the guitar. And then this finger will go kind of above it. So that's the movement. That's what I'm doing first. It might not be comfortable to move your third finger first, but if you condition yourself to do it, that change will become a lot easier. And eventually, everyone will get to the same point where all your fingers are moving at once. G, D, G, D, G, D. But everyone has their own um, process to get to that stage. A lot of people instinctively use their first finger to move first, which makes G to D quite hard, I think, because it's hard to see where that first finger needs to go. It's very difficult. When you look at your guitar, all of you who are holding your guitars at the moment, look down at the strings and try and see where fret number two is on the G string, the third one up. When you look at the strings, you can't see. Like, you can't tell which string is which. It's all by feel. I know you people do play like this. A lot of I've seen a few people playing like this so who've been playing for a long time. And they can see everything, but it makes it more difficult to kind of reach around. And they've just got used to that now. Um, but... You know, there's nothing wrong with doing that, I suppose, but it, it, it closes doors for you eventually. And just by understanding what each finger has to do, um, it helps quite a bit. You can even move just one finger at a time. So move your third finger back and forth. And then you move this finger back and forth. And then you move this finger back and forth. Then you can start moving two at once. There's a lot of ways you could do it. There's a lot of different, different ways to, to simplify something and then build it back up in a digestible way. Most of my favorite chocolate bar, I really like dark, just dark chocolate, any dark chocolate. There's a really cheap one from like Aldi, which I which I love, the salted one. Salted chocolate is amazing. Yeah, I used to be into all, um, <laughs> uh, you know, like Double Decker and Snickers and all that kind of thing. It just gives me a headache now. Maybe, uh, maybe I'm getting old, I don't know. <laughs> but it just gives me a really bad headache. Okay, so, uh, where are we? Is it difficult to read music on a regular stave? Uh, it is difficult to read music on a regular stave because you've got the same notes in multiple positions. So middle C, the way you'd read middle C on the first ledger line down is here on the guitar. On the piano, that's got one place. So when you see that note, that has one, that on, you just know where it is. And I don't play piano well. <laughs> I've never learnt piano like the way that I've learnt guitar um, but I, the way that I imagine the notes on the piano is closer to how I imagine them in my head a little bit if you know what I mean it's a very linear thing if I think of a high note it's kind of in a row you know this note is lower than that note and that's easy to hear you can hear that but when you when you play that on the guitar you can find the same notes in a few different positions. They're all the same note. Almost, the first one's an octave lower. But but yeah, there's, um, there's a few things you need to learn first before you learn standard music notation, which is like C major scale. If you wanted to learn more about that, then there's books that are quite good called The Guitarist Way, or Guitarist Way, I think there's four different ones. That's how I learned to read music. I taught myself to read the music, I don't know, about 10 years ago, with the intention of being a session musician, not session musician, um, playing an orchestra pits. But around here, there's no way to get in <laughs> unless you wait for someone to die. So, uh, so yeah, so it's a skill that I've gained, I suppose, and it's been handy since, especially working with schools. And I find reading standard music on guitar 
means more. I've got a big, massive classical book that I, I just I just learn a song every now and again because I'm playing something that was written centuries ago, and it's it hasn't it wasn't recorded then as things are recorded now. It's it's to me like pop music now is just cheap. It's all just kind of regurgitated and repackaged the same stuff. But when you learn a classical piece from centuries ago, and you realise yeah everything is taken from this everything sonically that i like the sound of is in this song that someone wrote hundreds of years ago and that means more to me and it, it when you read it on tablature like eventually i know this is a beginner thing sorry <laughs> i know this is a beginner course but for me reading music is um is really i don't know it's just more i can't think of the word what's the word um fulfilling uh steve Vai says a lot about reading guitar music and I kind of agree with him. If you look at any interviews with him talking about how, like, the way that he reads music. Um, okay, is the uh, what else we got? <coughs> um, the lessons. Oh yeah, guess the tune. Right, sorry. I'm glad you said. <laughs> right, yeah. Thanks, John and Susan. I'll um, I'll I'll sort that out by tomorrow. I'll get that up. I I did plan to have a few different ones on a separate PDF. So I'll do that by tomorrow. Thanks. <laughs> Sorry, you completely. Uh, I just flown my, blown my mind. No, what's the word? Not in my brain today. Anyway, um, making your wrist more comfortable when practicing chords. Um, if you send Veronica, if you send me a picture on Instagram, just so I can check, what you don't want is your thumb to wrap around. Instinctively, a lot of people will will choke the guitar and they'll hold the neck as if you know they want to get more power on something. And they'll kind of, I don't know, it's like you're strangling it and we don't want that. You want to try and keep it, keep your thumb down low and all the movement goes towards your thumb. Um, ideally, if you ever get any tension, any pain or any kind of aching in, in a joint in particular, uh, send me a picture and I'll, I'll, I can give you more specific advice on that then. A B chord. Uh, yeah, B chord, that's going to be a bar chord. There's no like, open position unless you do a B7, if that's an option. If the key of the song is in E, then I'd go for B7. It's much easier. But we haven't got to bar chords yet. Um, so I don't really want to talk about those for now. Um, yeah. Let's have a look. Right, okay. So on to the next thing for this. Let me bring up my thing that I keep messing up all the time. <laughs> uh, right, so... What I'm going to try and do is we're going to play through these chords together if it'll work. Is it going to work? Um, no, it's not going to work. Is it going to work? Right, this is weird. Hopefully that's up. Is it up? Yeah, there we are. Cool. This is delayed. Yeah, I know why now. There's that weird kind of bit when people are doing uh, live feeds. <laughs> well, you can't see me right anyway yeah you'll have to do without my forehead for now so we're going to play these chords this is the song that i'm not going to tell you what it is you've got to try and guess what it is and just try and keep up with this g to d in here um what we're going to try and do is put a metronome on we're going to start really slow and we'll do one strum for each one let me yeah so nice and slow after four one strum for G is going to last four beats. Same for D, A minor, and C. Okay, hopefully you're up to speed with these. If you're not, pick a chord to play and just focus on that one chord. So if you can only do G, just do G, and then the next time around, do G. The important thing about this is to follow the chords and see if you can play in time. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Two, three, four. Right, cool. Now we're going to take it up. And this time, we are going to try and play four strums each. Those of you that are ready to do four strums, if you're not quite there, then just stick with doing one strum for each bar. But if, you, if you're if comfortable strumming, then we'll do four strums for each one. Okay, one, two, three, four.
Okay. Now, well done, everyone who's kept up to that point. I'm going to take it up again. Now, I'm going to take it up quite a lot. Let me just check the speed of this. Yeah, we're going to try, like, 150-ish. <laughs> and we'll see if we can keep up with this. I know I'm losing a lot of people doing this, but I did want to do it. If you're, if this is too quick and you can't keep up, or you're not at the point where you can play these chords yet, um, just listen to it and see if you can, see if you can guess what song it is. Ready? One, two, three, four. Okay. <laughs> now that's roughly the speed of the song. Like I said, I don't want to play it because um, I don't I don't want to get like flagged for copyright or anything. Um, we'll come back to that in a little while let me check all these this has turned into more of a like like full-on question and answer so um see. let me have a quick read sorry you're just watching me look at the screen at the moment <laughs> right yeah so one finger up so tj says i've been playing guitar for a while i have no problem with this at all but realize i play the open g different to me uh, one finger up, so second finger on A string, pinky on E string, so second finger on A string, um, not sure, I'm not sure if I follow, if the, a lot of people do play G with four fingers, a lot of people will put your little finger on the high E string, third finger on the B string, and then those two where they normally are, um, that is G, there's no different to our G that we've done. The reason why I've done G the way that I've done it is that's like standard G, but well, both of them are kind of standard, but it's easier to tell three fingers what to do rather than four. Um, let me have a quick look. Thing, I'm playing F. Yeah, sorry, I missed a few of these. Um, <clears throat> tips on playing F. F is one of the most difficult ones at this point. Um, there's no tips on playing it. What I, a lot of time I do is just skip F, kind of, F is a partial bar chord. If, if you're talking about that one where you play just the D, the G, the B, and the E string, like this, that's more difficult to play than full, full F, the full bar chord F. So bar chord is what you want to look into. Um, you can strengthen your fingers by doing power chords. Uh, if you look into those and let me know if you have any problems. <coughs> um, yeah, guess the tune. I get the guess the tunes up. Sorry about the lesson five. Guess the tune. I can, um I was planning on putting a separate one up, and I it's been brought to my attention that it's not actually up yet. So it will be up tomorrow. Um, yeah. So going back to the TJ's comment, <coughs> if you're playing G, the way that I'm reading that is one finger up, so second finger on the A string, pinky on the E string, um, like that. That wouldn't be G. If it sounds like this, that is a type of C chord rather than G. So you can send me a picture if you want to, and I can try and elaborate a little bit more. Like, personally, I send you uh, any advice, but the only variations of G that you can really play is G the way we do it, or with an extra finger on the B string. Yeah, we haven't done F yet. Um, <coughs> trying to learn the song with an F chord. Use F major seven instead. Um, F major seven, we, yeah, we'll try and do soon. Basically, just for you, who is it? Let me find it. So, Leah, I think, my eyes working. Yeah, Leah. If you play a C chord and you move your third finger and second finger to the next strings higher in pitch, so your second finger goes to the G string, third finger goes to the D string, that is F major seven. It's an easier version of F that you can manage, probably. It's closer to C than it is to full F, which is which is very hard at this point. <laughs> I know, it's a bit like a <laughs> like doctor's appointment thing. It's weird. Um, Heaven's Door. Yeah, we've done, I think we've done Heaven's Door. I don't know. Live forever. Okay. 
Right, all oh, right, sorry, right, sorry, yeah, you're guessing the songs. Heaven's Door, um... It's very similar, and Live Forever, it's very similar to that one as well. Thank you, Veronica. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting used to it, mind. I don't know uh, whether it is useful for most people. Um... <laughs> C is hard. The reason why C is difficult is because there's no muscles pushing your fingers that way. I'm sure I've said it. I say it so many times, I forget who I've told. Um, it just takes a bit of getting used to. As long as your thumb isn't too high, then C should be okay. It's all about the angle of your wrist. <coughs> Happy with that, Tay? I shredded some harmonic minor stuff. Um... So let me have a quick read. Yeah, okay. So A chord's really annoying to play. I know I struggle with that. The A chord, you'll see me cheat a little bit. I use one finger to squash down all three strings. <coughs> but that depends on how much that joint of your finger actually bends. Mine bends quite a bit. Some people doesn't. So some people find it hard. Some There's no... Like bend in that joint sometimes but i've my fingers are a bit too big to fit in all a i can just about do it but it is quite uh hard long train run in no nope, i don't know what that thing was i just played tay asked me to, to rip through some uh harmonic minor stuff so i did um <laughs> yeah cool yeah i've been dealing with a five-year-old all day <laughs> um yeah i can't get a Use use one finger. Use one finger to squash all three down if you need to. But to be honest, A was just to give you um, a different version of A minor, so you can hear the difference with it. There are songs with it in, um, and to let you know like where we are with the amount of chords that we know, we've done E minor, then G, A minor, C, D, and A. I believe if I've missed any, let me know. There are, I don't know. There's about eight or ten before we can play anything you want so we get in there and i'm trying to introduce them in a way that it isn't too much but people will find um like i've mentioned f major seven so far some people will find that one easier than to a so as we go down don't feel like you you have to stop you know don't feel like you can't go on if you don't fully understand something or you can't quite get something just keep going on through it anyway you will get to something that you find easier and then when you go back, everything will be a lot easier. Keep pushing forward. Even if you find you're not quite there, if you find it's, it's something's difficult to do, keep learning more. Keep pushing and keep trying to learn, uh, try and go further with it if you can. And then everything that you learned previously will get easier. The way that I found it always weird, I learned following the, the grades. They're called uh, RGT grades. <coughs> and... By the time I'd go for, like, say, grade three, I'd go for my grade three, I would be just struggling to get through a, a, some sections of it. And I'd get through the grade, and then as soon as I got to grade four, I'd get to the point where I'm entering for grade four, and the grade three stuff just becomes really, really easy. And I was always wondering, like, why, why didn't I just go for grade four and then do the grade three exam, <laughs> rather than stressing out so much? And it's, it's quite a common thing. Um, a lot of people that come and have lessons like with me, I'll try to get them to do something a bit more difficult. And as long as you've got that mindset that, yeah, I'm going to keep doing it, going to keep doing what he says, don't worry, just keep doing it, keep doing it. They will get stronger, they will get a bit easier, and then they'll, you know, but the stuff that they wanted to do previously becomes much, much easier. How long does it take to build up the tolerance to push the strings? Um, to, uh, 20 minutes is pretty good for a week, uh, answering Howard's question. Um... It's the, it depends like how much you play. First, The first couple of days, you can play for about two or three minutes before your fingers hurt. I used to practice to the point where my fingers ache every time I practice, which got longer and longer as I went. And even, like, I wouldn't stop for the day. I would stop for, like, an hour, and then I'd come back to it in the beginning. Um, so calluses do develop. Just you just got to keep on top of it. If you leave it for, like, a while, you think, oh, it's, too, it's hurting too much, and you give it, a, like, a week you'll be starting all over again. Your, your body gets unconditioned. <laughs> Can't get the lines off your fingers. Well done. Good. That's what we want. 
Um, <laughs> I'm glad to see everyone's uh, forming. Carlos, it's been five weeks. Mind this is it's a long time. So yeah, your calluses would be uh, developing quite well. I've actually started doing like calisthenic stuff, and I'm noticing calluses on my hand developing the same way on the palms of my hand. So you might find they'll dry up and they'll crack and they'll peel off a little bit, um, and then they regrow again, tougher again. Like you wouldn't notice that my fingers are calloused, uh, calloused at the moment, but they are, and they all they always have been since I first started. But there's a certain amount of time they seem to shed and then you go back to like zero again a couple of times i've um, accidentally cut my finger as well where it hasn't bled because of the amount of skin on there <laughs> but you go back to like raw skin this is horrendous that's the worst that's horrible um yeah where are we what's a mod a minor again a minor is like c <laughs> Only you move one finger underneath. You look back at the PDFs if there's any of those calls you're not sure of. <laughs> yeah, I mean, with A, it comes down to uh, just how how big your fingers are and what guitar you're playing and where you're going to next as well. I mean, some things with A can't be played unless you use one finger. <laughs> Like that kind of thing. If you if you're embellishing chords, then you learn to use one finger eventually. I'm sorry if I'm if I keep going on to stuff that's a bit too advanced. Just tell me to shut up. Um. <laughs> Index fingers permanently numb. Good. <laughs> that's what you want. You need to be in pain. No, I'm joking. If you are in pain, stop. <laughs> I gotta say that. Uh, yeah. So. Hammer-ons. Um, with hammer-ons, it depends what string you hammer on. Hammer-ons, for those of you that don't know, are when you pluck, if we, we just pick an open string, pluck any note, and then you hammer your finger on, and the note keeps sustained. As I said earlier on, if you don't stop the string from vibrating, if you come down fast enough, the string will carry on vibration. The, the um, vibrating. The impact of your finger will carry the note forward if you're getting fret buzz it just might not it might be that you're not placing your finger in the right spot you want to be really close to the fret wire that you're on not too far that way because whenever you fret something that's the space well that's the the length of string that's vibrating and if it's not quite in contact with the fret i don't know it, it kind of it doesn't know whether it, where it needs to be, basically. If it's down to what finger that you're playing, you can strengthen each finger by focusing on, I do not like hammer on focusing. So you, um, I don't know whether that's an actual thing, but these are all stuff that I've picked up from different people as well. Um, there might be people watching this saying, oh, I've seen someone else talk about that. I don't actually know where I've, where I've picked this thing up from. But you can, if you want to strengthen each finger, squash them all down and hammer-on. When you get to the hammer-ons, which we will get to hammer-ons in a couple of weeks, for those beginners, um, you just work on each each finger, you know, strengthen it a little bit. Um, will it affect my golf? <laughs> I'm not a golfer, so I have no idea. I don't expect fingertips would affect your golf. Um, it hasn't affected me at all, really. It means I can pick up really hot cups of tea, though, which is, uh, which is quite a good skill. If you don't get anything else from this, it'll be that. <laughs> Uh, no calluses for me yet. Just stick with it. Uh, it's a good, it's a good um, uh, indication of whether you're practicing enough or whether you've been able to practice uh, for a good amount of time. When you get calluses forming after a week or two, then you know it's good. You, you just notice it being a little bit numb. I'm not talking like the soles of the, the feet of a, you know a barefoot runner or anything. Um, let me have a quick read. What songs will we be able to play? Um, I'm kind of taking suggestions from a lot of people i've got a, like a big, big list of songs here which i've been working through and i've been choosing songs which are easy to play structure wise in the beginning once we've introduced a few more songs with you know like a verse and a chorus um maybe some will have a different intro some will have uh, a pre-chorus or a middle eight and you understand how to put that all together uh, then we can progress into more complicated songs and there are some some songs with really really long sequences as well and I don't want to just dump that on everyone in the beginning. But 
as we go through and I keep adding more, more and more songs, there will be more for you to work through. If you've checked the database on my website, there are a few extra songs on there. There's even more songs available if you're a buddy or a, a patron. So I put a link in my description for that if you wanted to be part of that kind of process. And I'm taking requests from my buddies as well. So if you want to do anything in particular, there's Bob Marley ones coming up. Um, I'm looking at some Beatles ones, Seraphonic songs. Uh, I don't know, a little bit of everything really. Um, no, hammer-ons, don't worry about hammer-ons. I'm just answering questions that I'm getting. So don't worry, it's not expected everyone to get used to that. Um, you don't have to get a capo, it's fine. But I mean, if you wanted to, if you get to the point where you're playing along with the songs and you want it to sound like the song so you can play with the song, it is important to get a capo. If you're not quite comfortable changing through all these chords yet, just do all of them without the capo and then when you're ready and you get it up to speed, then you can start, you know, then get a capo and you can play along with the song then. But it's not the end of the world. If the reason why you're playing is for yourself and for no one else and you just want to get better at something, you don't need a capo at all. If you want to make something sound like a song that you like, if your goal is to play a certain song, then you probably, you may need a capo if the song requires you to have a capo. It's not essential. Though. We're still doing the same thing. When you put a capo on, have I got a capo here? I should have a capo here. I do have a capo here. <laughs> when I put a capo on, there is no difference with, uh, oh, let me have a look. That is no different, like, uh, technique-wise to... It's, it's, it's the same conditioning that we're working up, so you don't need to get one to get better on the guitar. No. What's my accent? I am Welsh. <laughs> I'm from Wales, the same place as... Same town, actually, as Anthony Hopkins. And who's the other guy? Uh, Michael Sheen. <laughs> and Paul Potts as well, all from the same place. And who's the other guy? Richard Burton as well. He's from around here. Uh, yes. And also, I find I've got to slow everything down when I speak to you as well. <laughs> uh, my usual speaking voice is about this quick normally when I'm speaking to someone who's like from around here. So I've really got to slow it down. <laughs> um, how do you find the song database? I will put I'll put all the links up on the description of this. And, uh, and yeah, you can look it up then, Andy. Um, everything will be on there. My Patreon page is where you can sign up to be a buddy if you want to. It's completely optional. You don't have to at all, but it just, um, it helps with the creation thing, if you know what I mean. Like, people who want to support me, it, you don't have to. I'm not making anyone do it. Um, one or two. Yeah, but you don't, well, take your time. For anyone that hasn't caught up with everything at the moment, don't panic. This is just like a halfway point check in basically i really want to like do stuff for you is this is it's all shaped by you and at this point i kind of know how it's going to go up to now i know how people are going to develop from now on people will be breaking off the, have you know as you've noticed people asking about classical playing people asking about playing with the plectrum uh, <laughs> uh finger picking i've been asked what else i've been asked i forgot to answer some of these um like rock stuff people were into rock people were into blues reggae i i i won't be able to like do everything in this 12 week course i would like to eventually have you know multiple courses for different things but uh, this is just a complete beginner thing so if you've got into it enough that you now listen to songs you don't normally listen to if you got into radiohead if you've got into uh, nine inch nails if you got into bob dylan or david bowie then you want to go down that direction. You want to learn songs that you want to learn. You don't want to always keep learning stuff that I'm telling you to learn. At some point, you will have to break off and do your own thing. So um, I want to make it like more beneficial for everyone, if you know what I mean. Uh, so yeah, if you find you're not up to level five, uh, lesson five yet, don't panic. Just take your time. This isn't going to end after the 12 weeks. I'm not getting rid of these videos after 12 weeks. They're going to stay on my channel forever. So... You can look up and you can go through it whenever you want. It's just, it's just, I don't know. The opportunity is there now for a lot of people to put the time in. And 
I just want to reassure everyone. So you can have a little chat on you. You know, you can, you can see how people are doing. Um, and I, I'm just glad that there's some sort of community that's that's come together, and everyone's just really nice. I expected so many like trolls and <laughs> and people because it's blown up really. At this time last month, I had 300 subscribers, and most of them I knew personally. I think <laughs> I don't really know, and I really appreciate those 300 subscribers. I haven't forgotten about those 300 subscribers, but I'm assuming that everyone else, um, like what am I, four hundred, four and a half thousand, I think at the moment. Like that's completely blown my mind. But every one of those new ones are here because of this 12-week course. So um, it's just nice to have some sort of community, if you know what I mean. Like in this, just to have something to do, something to take your mind off things. <laughs> um, yeah, Michael Sheen, that's it, yeah. Anyone else from Talbot you can think of? <laughs> um, Non-traditional guitar songs, hip-hop. Yeah, every song, just to, just to let you know. Every single song can be played on guitar, even if you think it can't. Even if it's something really odd and strange, like the like I don't know, dubstep or anything. Everything is harmonically the same. It won't sound the same, <laughs> um, but yeah. But everything can be kind of broken down and put onto guitar, if you know what I mean. Everything can can be made into an, an acoustic version if we need to. So yeah, we we can do other songs. Let me know if there are any songs that you want to do. Uh, let me know in the comments if you want to just put a big list at the end of the video. Everyone write down a song that you really want to learn and I will do my best to include as many as I can. Hopefully, if I've got enough time to put into it, there'll just be a big massive da database of loads of songs. The simpler the song, the earlier it'll go up. If you want to do, um, I don't know, Rush or something, that's not going to be going up for a while, obviously. <laughs> Chicago. Yeah, I'm glad, I'm glad to see how it's reaching like so many people. Michigan, Seattle. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah, Seattle. I'm glad you're enjoying this, actually. I've, to be honest, I've come to terms with it. I've enjoyed it. I wouldn't mind doing it again. I didn't do half the things that I wanted to do, but um, we maybe I'll answer a couple more questions and then we'll leave it there then. Um, I'll What I'll do, I'll play us out with the actual song. And yeah, I, I will do that in a second. <laughs> I love reading these comments. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad. I'm, I'm glad everyone's kind of um, finding the chance to do it. You know, find the excuse to play. It's good. Um. <laughs> Handsome fella and good hair. Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate it. What's the goal at the end of the twelve weeks? Okay, so the, the goal at the end of the twelve weeks is to know around 10, 12 chords, to understand how to, to, how to use a capo to be able to play any song that you want. Um, I will be introducing a little bit of theory, a little bit, to understand what certain type of chord sequences are. And you'll understand why Twist and Shout sounds like La Bamba. If any of you are interested, look it up. They're identical. And it's to do with the, the, the relative chord changes. I, I don't want to go too far into it, but once you understand that, loads and loads of songs just become that little bit easier to understand. Not every song is completely different. Nearly every song that we do has some sort of link to the previous song. Um, the, uh, what, uh, the other stuff that I wanted to like introduce to you as well, I, a lot of it is just introdu introduction stuff. So I'll be introducing scales and lead playing for those of you that are interested in that. Some of you may not be. Some of you might not want to do improvising and do guitar solos, but some of you will start doing it without even thinking that you wanted to, without even knowing that it existed. And when you start doing it, it might just kind of spark something off, something extra, completely new that you can, you know, completely just get lost on. I might have mentioned in a video before, but the way that I always uh, describe learning guitar is that we're all on a road. We're all just on one road just going down the same direction, learning as much as we can. And after a certain point, that road can branch off. So you can go into lead playing, you can go into finger picking, you can go into 1920s gypsy jazz, or <laughs> no, whatever, that'd be like further down the, down the road. But every every now and again, you get you know, like a fork and you can go off and do acoustic or lead or electric or whatever. And eventually, you just get completely 
diverged for ages off something that you didn't expect you'd even want to know like blues who listens to blues now what, what when was the last blues song that was out on you know in the charts i don't know about anywhere apart from uk <laughs> so uh, yeah so i might be like wrong but whenever i ask like the younger kids that i teach uh we'll do a blues scale today have you um have you heard blues before no what's blues no idea what blues is so then i give them an example and think oh yeah right yeah, I think I've heard that before. And it's always been like in the background of a film or, you know, it's something, it's never been a big part of a song. It hasn't been for ages. You know, I can't even remember. Not in my lifetime has like a proper blues song been, been there. But um, like the older generation of guitarists, the ones that taught me, um, blues was a big massive thing. Blues is a part of everything. It still is in songs, but people don't understand. But um, I'm, I'm going off on one again. <laughs> um, but everyone is on that road and the more time you spend learning the more opportunities you get to branch off in different things so this 12b course is basically an introduction to a lot of different stuff so that you can eventually at the end of the 12 weeks you can go off and go on to your own journey you don't have to keep coming with me you can go off you if you looked up any other guitar teachers on youtube or anywhere else you will understand a bit more about what they're talking about the reason why people find it hard to learn online is because well, the same reason why I've not done any lessons up to this point. This is the first guitar lesson that I've, I've recorded, um, like this this course, is because it's hard to know who you're talking to. I have no idea who I'm talking to at all. If I put a lesson out how to play, what do we do? A candy. If I put a lesson out how to play candy and I just said, right, okay, we're going to play A minor first, two bars of that, and the strumming pattern is up and down. I'm going to keep going with the strum pattern. Uh, that's E minor. Then we're going to go to G. Two bars of this. Then we're going to go to D. Uh, two bars of that. And then we're going to go back to A minor. Oh, by the way, but D, you can play D7 if you wanted to. And the time signature doesn't change. It's in 4-4. Four, four. All this stuff that they talk about <laughs> doesn't make any sense if you're just learning an easy song. You type in the Google, easy guitar song to play. Candy might come up. You look it up and there's someone's talking about in a language you don't understand so the whole point about for this 12 week guitar course was, was to teach you that language or the beginnings of that language so you can look up anything else you want and at least have some sort of understanding of what they are talking about <laughs> like i said i don't want you to buy anything from me it's just um you know I, I don't want to be that youtube guy who's just selling stuff all the time um but yeah interesting though today massive milestone for me my channel can be monetized so you may notice a few adverts if there's too many adverts tell me i don't want it to get in the way of anything but uh but yes yeah, the first time i've i've been able to um put adverts on my channel as much as i complain about adverts so let me know what you think about that if it gets in the way please let me know um sorry let me have a quick check how important are scales um it depends what your goals are if your goal is just to play songs songs that you like <clears throat> you don't really need to play scales if you want to understand more about what you're playing then it is and well if you want to understand more about music really um i it's you need to make it fun when you play guitar and it's, it's pointless introducing scales if there's no point to learn scales if you're learning the g pentatonic major scale because someone's told you to learn the, the g pentatonic major scale because it's handy to know <laughs> To, when will you ever use the G pentatonic major scale when you're playing pop songs when you're playing uh, little mix songs or you know whatever I don't know um, Jesse J or anything you know it's just not going to be used if there's a if there's a purpose for a scale then I will show you if there's um, you know I I don't believe in showing you stuff for the sake of showing you it if you if you and everyone's got different goals that's the hard thing about this <laughs> Everyone's got completely different goals when they play guitar. So some people have one song they want to play. I used to teach some guy who only wanted to play Rush songs. I mentioned Rush earlier on. Some of the most difficult songs you can approach on guitar, <laughs> timing-wise especially. Um, and all he wanted to do was play <laughs> Rush. And I knew how to get him to that point. I knew, like, okay, we'll do this first. We'll introduce you to this like, little, little thing. And we'll build. But no just rush show me the easiest rush song we build from there <laughs> I, he did quite well but it's just made it so much more difficult for me and some people are fine with that structure some people are okay just gunning for what they want and just trudging through the difficult stuff going over and over again over things they can't do 
and just keep in going no matter what most people find that hard most people find that really difficult and you know a really uphill battle um so you need to give yourself little goals little tiny goals right P learn the spider exercise remember it without having to read the music that's it forget about how it sounds learn the order that your fingers have to go down that's the first step that will apply to every song so learn the chords that are involved learn the sequence of chords and then do it without the music then do it like with some sort of metronome so you're you're using your year as well and build from there so hopefully after this 12 weeks you'll understand a bit more about how i approach stuff um temi blues festival yeah <laughs> <laughs> well, if you're into blues, it's going to be everywhere. Yeah, I mean, I know I mentioned blues isn't it isn't in pop music that I know of. It's not a big apparent thing. The only because I, if all the kids that I ask who are into pop music, I've no idea what blues music is. So, um, if you're into blues, then yeah, you, it's going to be everywhere. Um, where are we? Have I missed anyone? Sorry if I've missed any any of these. Um, how do people just hear a song once and be able to play it seconds later? Um that's to do with just conditioning the same way that um you can sing the happy birthday song you know how that sounds so you use your brain to tell your voice what to do people that have been playing for a long time do exactly the same thing with guitar so um there's ways to, to build and develop that skill and there's ways to listen to chords and identify the space in between there's a f there's loads of things you can do for this that I teach people like um, if a chord change as an example I know it's hard because I'm the one doing it if I had something to listen to then I could maybe I'll go into like a, a listening live stream and you can t you can, I'll work out a song live or something um, let me know what song if you got a suggestion I'll try and work it out now if I can as long as it's not like too <laughs> too bonkers um, but yeah if if I'm listening to a chord change say it's going from C to G I'm not listening to any of these I'm listening to this and that bum bum so then I'm, I in my head I know about the notes and I know the space between them in my head it's its own thing it's its own language in your head it'll be completely different there's no one can um, kind of put the notes in your head the way that they are in my head um, it's the same way that you you think of everything language if if you think of the alphabet some people think of the alphabet all in the line other people see it on a keyboard some people have it like in a row like that some people have it all in one big block if you just close your eyes imagine all of the letters of the alphabet everyone is going to visualize that completely differently <clears throat> it's the same with notes so there's no easy way to explain that's why it's really hard if you look up a lesson how to work up the song by year it's very hard to do but there's there's things that you can kind of point out that i do um but i have no idea how anyone else does it and it'll be the same for you eventually it's to do with experience the more you play the more you get used to like as an example um shotgun by uh what's his name <laughs> george ezra so those chords are exactly the same as what's the other one i'm on my way driving at night what's that one that one cast on the hill it's exactly the same chord progression now some people will listen to a song and know that even though they don't know any instrument they can't play any instrument but there's about four or five different songs that i could sing over that one progression um and that's part of it as well sometimes it's got nothing to do with the way that you play guitar sometimes it's the way that you your, your brain um thinks about music in general uh, but yeah, you get there if you stick with it. You get there. <clears throat> uh, yeah, <laughs> good choice, Andy Wilson. Yeah, um, Brown Red Girl, that's a good one. That is on the list. We'll be doing that one soon, very soon actually. Brown Red Girl. It's a longer sequence, but uh, so I've saved it until now. But yeah, that'll be coming up soon. Just want to answer Andy Wilson about the Van Morrison thing. Um. Iron Maiden song with finger picking. Which song? Iron Maiden with finger picking. That's a bit nuts. Let me know which one it is. Um, experience. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, you, yeah. Richard explained it well. So the root note is what you're listening out, out for. 
Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Carl. So when you start playing, you will you <laughs> you, you kind of isolate the guitar. Has that, has that happened to anyone yet? Have you tried to pick up on what the guitar is doing? And eventually you'll start to hear the root notes changes. I started talking about that. So C to G. Bum, bum. C, da, 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 da. C, B, A, G. So that's, that's the way the notes are spaced in my head. Um, and some people can't explain that very well. Some teachers just assume that you need to know it. I, I, I've, there's a few teachers that uh, I've seen who teach in a way like, okay, copy me. Okay, they have no idea where to start. They have no idea what you were doing. And, but some people find it hard to explain that. I do my best to explain it. But, um, but yeah, that is hard to do. Are you going to introduce singing while playing in this course? Um, I can do, yeah. Um, I mean, I know singing isn't for everyone. But I can do. <laughs> I remember my space, yeah. Right, okay. So just to finish this off, we've been like an hour and a half. I just flown. But I, I think I started a warm up towards the end. Thank you for everyone who's joined in. I really appreciate all the comments. I hope you've all been uh, enjoying. I'm gonna play the song. That's my track drum. Uh, let me see if I can remember. Okay, so I'm gonna leave this there for now. Uh, tune in Friday for my regular Friday feature. I, uh, uh, yeah, and Monday will be lesson six. That's the midpoint. And yeah, I hope you enjoy. Um, maybe I'll do this again. I think it will be more of just a question and answer though, rather than doing the spider exercise in the beginning. I think that was uh, kind of lost really. <laughs> because I thought of this as like halfway between a recorded lesson and a one-to-one -one lesson, as I mentioned, I think. And also I spent one hour work, like before this, just making sure I'd say the right stuff. Didn't say any of it. <laughs> the same. Okay, so here we go. Um, I will leave you for this one, with this one. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, maybe I will do more. Maybe I will do more. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, thank you, everyone. So here we go. you got to guess what song this is. I'll make it super easy. <laughs> um, yeah, here we go. Um, I forgot what it goes like now. That's G first, isn't it? There we are. I'll get there now. Sorry. And those of you that don't know, I'm using a looper as well. And if you play a bit longer before I go, thank you so much, everyone. And keep practicing. <laughs> <laughs>